Okay, so I'm going to just do this simple ghost sticker uh, for you guys, and uh, I would like your first sticker to just be really simple. Don't try to go really complex on your first one. Why? Just let me talk, please. So, um, and I'd like you to do it in yellow, so there's a reason why my ghost is yellow, and the reason is I got donated a lot of yellow stickers. If you look back there, I just had a lot of it, and it's a good first attempt. Once you've done your first one, then you can show that you know the workflow, and then you could do it in a different color, and you can start to get more and more complex, and you can start to get more and more colors. If you look at the back, we have like a parrot with like seven different colors, we got a donut with a few colors, the plain, a couple colors. So they're actually separate cuts, so it's a, it's a step up in difficulty. So, but for your first sticker, I want it to be something that would just look good as one color. It can be any logo, you can do a Nike logo, you can do it whatever, but simple in terms of the geometry and sure. one color only. Okay? So let's start from the beginning. Uh, open a new file. So uh, the default, uh, sorry, not open, start a new one. And then the default is the ACAD, that's good. Just go open. So this is a brand new uh, AutoCAD file. First off, you're gonna to wanna to get a picture in here probably. I mean, you could freehand one, but I'm not a great freehand drawer. So I would suggest finding one online, especially for just your first one. So, finding a ghost, um, oh yeah, and I often use the word clip art because it's kind of nice, simple uh, drawings then. All right, so we got a bunch of ghost clip arts here. Okay, maybe I'll make a, I'll make a new one for you guys, I don't know, this one. Okay, now there's sometimes issues with saving these things. Let me try a trick I learned actually yesterday. If I go save image as, okay, okay, well, we have a ghost. Okay, no, that was, uh, let's try that one. Okay, save image as, save image as, not the link. And where's my dialog box? There we go. Um, it's trying to make. Not a DWG. Try to put JPEG as the uh, extension, and let's see if that'll work. And then just be careful where you save it. Save it in your place. This is where I keep my stuff. Jupe's designs. <clears throat> oh no, I don't want to replace it because I did this yesterday. I want to call it something else. Maybe Ghost Two. Have I got one of those? There we go. Okay, so I have an image saved locally, and it's important that it stays in your folder because it's going to refer to it in AutoCAD. Okay, so where my new drawing? Um, now, you could probably find it and uh, drop it in there, but I just, I've got so many things open. Here's goes to drag and drop usually works. Hey, this is good. So it's wanting me to put a location. And if you've seen what I've done before, I like to just put things at zero, zero, so I know they're just kind of in the center. It can become handy in some later stuff we will do. Um, then if you notice, it gives us some numbers in terms of the size. The default, I think, usually is one inch wide by a little bit more than an inch tall. So that's only this big. Uh, so what I try to do when I do this is estimate my size that I'm going to have in the end. Um, so I'm going to say, well, what if I want a three inch approximate sticker? I'll multiply it by three. So it doesn't have to be too precise, but a mistake that many students have made in the past is they just sort of click on the screen when they're zoomed out and the picture is like millions of inches wide. And then when they go to try to print it, cut it, um, they have problems. So pay a little bit of attention to the size of your image when you put it in there. It'll save you possibly you know. Now it wants to know if I want to rotate my image. Uh, the default is zero, so if I just hit enter, it's, it's in there. Perfect. I got my little cute ghost. Now, how do I trace that? I'll start trying to trace it. Uh, sometimes you'll want a straight line tool. Sometimes you want maybe arc, maybe arc for his head. But if you check it out, it's a white ghost, and I'm linking white lines. How well do you think that's going? Not well at all. I can't see anything. So I'm going to delete that. Actually, did pretty good. Um, I suggest highly a fresh layer just for a picture. Anytime you're using pictures, call it pick if you want. Um, and then here's a trick: turn the transparency up to say 80, and that is going to make it 80% transparent. But currently, this ghost is still on layer zero, the default layer, so I have to actually select it by grabbing uh, an edge here. So now I have it selected, and then I right click on it, and we go properties. I can change it from layer zero to layer called pick. Okay, awesome. So that is now much more faint, and now I can try my arc again. So arc, there's many ways to make an arc with it, but it works pretty good. 
So you can use straight lines if they're in your drawing, you can use arcs, you can use circles, rectangles, whatever. Um, but for the rest of this guy, I'm going to switch to a cool tool called the Spline Fits. Okay, I like this one. Make sure that it snaps onto any other geometry that you have. Otherwise, um, for example, if I started here and traced this ghost, what do you think would happen when you cut your sticker right here? It's not going to come off, right? It's going to have a problem. So make sure, like, you may have to turn on, like, the object snap settings. Uh, right now it's on endpoint, which is good. So if that is not on, you may have to turn it on. Don't just try to assume that it's going to link. You really want to see the green square. So it's definitely connected. Okay, then just quickly um, get the basic outline. And you don't have to stress, see how it's locking onto things? Actually, I don't like that. Um, so one of my other snaps must be currently on. You can always change. Oh, it's got polar tracking, so it wants to go vertical. I don't want that. So I turn it off. And I can continue. Um, and you don't have to stress about being perfect on the first go. Do you see how the whole thing changes based on my next click? So it kind of morphs along with you as you draw, and you can always adjust later. So I don't spend too much time being perfect on the first trace. I just really want to make sure I connect my geometry up, and then hit enter. And it's pretty good. I mean, it's only a ghost, but I can go in and, you know, that one was a little bit off, so I can adjust that one. Okay, how do we like over here? So I click the line, and it shows you your nodes. You can adjust your oops, adjust your nodes, okay? And then if you don't like it, you can say, oh, I don't like either one of those, so I can undo and undo. Okay, so I'm happy enough for my ghost. I do want the eyes, though, so you can use circle tool, like that, make another circle. Okay, whoa. Okay, good enough. Now, you definitely always want to save. So save it as a DWG first. That's like AutoCAD's default file. Call it something meaningful because I have thousands of designs. You're going to end up with lots of designs. If I don't call it something that I'll, I'll remember or be able to search, I'll lose it pretty fast. Uh, goes to, maybe, and that's as a DWG. Um, that I can't print with. I need to do one different type of file to actually cut with that machine. And the type of file you want is called a DXF. And the best year it seems to be is 2010. I believe the machine was built in 2010. So uh, sometimes drawings work, sometimes they don't. It sometimes takes a bit of trial and error, but that one seems to work the majority of the time. So this is going to be a 2010 DXF file. Save, cool. The next software is brand new, I think, for this group. It's called uh, Graphtech Studio, this one, G-R-A-P-H-T-E-C. This one is going to talk to that machine, which is a Graphtech, uh, Graphtech Final Cutter. Let's try a new one. Uh, we're working on some letters for the football team there. Anyway, um, now I can open that DXF file, designs. You always have to click this stupid thing here. It bugs me, but every single time. You have to click to all files. Uh, and then I have to do the date modified thing, so my most recent one. So there's goes two, and beautiful. Now the size comes in nicely here because I took that time at the beginning to make sure it was about three inches big. Okay, and it didn't have to be perfect in that sizing because you can adjust here, but watch. If you select only one line, that can be a problem, right? I don't want that. So control Z uh, undoes that. Um, control A. So it's any, anything and everything. And now, yeah, I could make it bigger or smaller, uh, depending. Okay, so this is ready now for cutting. So when you uh, head over to the cutting machine, you actually need to bring your laptop and head over to the machine. There is a USB plug that is connected to our machine. So plug that in, okay? And then it's a matter of getting, if you need to stand up at the back, feel free to do that. Now it's a matter of finding what sticker piece you want to use. And please, what color did I suggest first? Yellow. 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 Just, I have so yellow. much yellow. Let's just practice on yellow. Yellow or orange? Yellow. Great. Okay, now, um, 
Can I have somebody turn on the lights, please? Uh, so we can see a little bit better here. If you need to stand up and come closer, now is a good time to do that. Um, this machine, when you turn it on, this should be freely movable. This is where the, there's a sharp knife tool. You would never have your hand under here when this thing is operating, and don't reach under there either. Uh, that should be freely movable so you can get it out of the way. And then we have two wheels, and this is a really important uh, where they go. There's certain places on here where it's rough and there's traction for it to like grip this thing. There's lots of places you could see even from where you guys are that it's shiny, it's very slippery. You wouldn't want the wheels to be on the slippery, it has to be on the grippy. There's also blue stickers here to help you know where the wheels have to be. Then there's one other important thing. There is a sensor, it's really small, but it's right here where my finger is. And your piece of sticker has to cover that when you load it because then it's gonna to start to measure it. It's got some lasers in there, okay? So when you play sets, you can move these wheels. They're a little stiffer than the other one, but they can be moved. You can try over here possibly, and move this one this way, if it fits on the, the grippy parts. So that's a good location actually, because this one's under this one, this one's well under this one, and it covers my laser, okay? So get it in there, and there's a lever back here that goes up and down, and when, it's, when the lever's up, the wheels are actually down, and now it has a good grip on my little sticker. Okay, that's a good place to be starting. So both wheels are on, over the grips, and the laser is currently hidden. Then there's some options to pick here, and if you're using a small sheet like what I have here, it is number three, and it's gonna measure. Okay, so it's gonna even tell me the cuttable area, which is, 3.6 by 7.3 for this piece of uh, sticker, which is uh, definitely, definitely big enough for what I want. Um, now, that is the area between the wheels, so you kind of want your wheels to be kind of as wide as possible without falling off uh, to give you more cuttable area. Then, on screen here, uh, the default is a regular page size, but if you select the A4, you can tell it to go automatic. Let's see if it works today. Yeah, that's good. So that is more accurately what it has measured for my piece. Now I can go maybe control A to select everything and then grab it, move it over. It's a little bigger than what I have to cut. So I'm just shrinking it down a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's on there, cool. Uh, and then um, this is called the design window. It's where you make your design choices. And then when you're finally ready to cut, there is one important little button that I'll, I'll leave it on covering over. If you can uh, see where it is on the screen, it's in the upper right hand corner. It's called the cutters window. This is the final step for cutting. Okay, and then if you've done everything else correctly, you should only need to hit the one button here, send to cutter. And we're in business. This kind of cut will be very fast. Okay, and it's done already. So just wait till it kind of stops. Yeah, done. I'll lift, like, pull that, push that lever down, releasing the wheels, and I have my sticker cut. You see anything? No. No. It's because it just made very small lines on there. So I actually have to uh, cut some things away. Um, I need some scissors. Okay, so try to save what's left if possible. Hard to see. You know, I'm trying not to trying to go fast here, but. So I can save that piece. Uh, if it is smaller than this, it's probably not very usable. Uh, general rule of thumb is kind of like a size of a fist. If it's smaller than your fist, it's probably not very usable here. So you could um, put it in the blue recycle bin. Uh, but if it's bigger than your fist, try to save it for somebody else. And oh yeah, there's a weight here to try to compress them because they're often curled. Um, so put it under the weight, okay? Then I just cut my fingernails this morning. So this could be a challenge. There's um, some tools that we have that can get under this thing. Yeah, no pressure, right? Who's got some fingernails? You got some fingernails? Get that corner going for me, please. There we go, good job. So go ahead, you can do it if you want. Just go ahead and peel away. There we go, ghost shape is good. And then there is two, of course, little eyeballs that need to be removed, and I have, I'm not gonna do it on camera here, but there's little dental tools that I have at my desk that you can borrow. You would actually sort of um, pick at that eye, the eye holes and get that out of there as well. And then, I guess the last thing is transfer tape. 
Um, there's a roll of tape on my desk that's pretty large, hey, zooming in on it, perfect. That is called transfer tape, and you would maybe then next, you could try to just do this by hand if you wanted to peel it off and put it on your binder, it's fine if you did that, but um, most of the time for something intricate, like you would want to preserve the location of everything, right? So you would put transfer tape on top carefully and cut that and then peel it from this backing and get it onto transfer tape and then, maybe I'll just uh, do this one by hand. So then I can probably get the eyeballs out. Yeah, eyeballs are out. So by hand is fine. Oh, maybe I'll put it right here. Okay. There we go. Okay, cute little ghost. Um, but transfer tape is necessary if you want to preserve the location of difficult things. And then you apply it to its final location. Get it down. Try not to get air bubbles underneath it. Try to get it down flat. That's it. Thanks, Tay.